This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the ASUS EPad slider, not to be confused with the transformer. Unlike the transformer, which has a separable keyboard that's sold separately, this guy has a keyboard built in, and it has a sliding design. You see the keyboard right here? It's got full rows, including a number row up here, and it's in that distinctive ASUS kind of bronzy brown like we saw on the transformer. It will be available in white as well as not available yet. I think they're targeting women with the white. It'll be interesting to see what that looks like. You can see here this has a, a more curved design. The transformer is very well angular and they've tried to make it look sort of more like a lifestyle product I think and also to make it look a bit smaller than it is too. They're tapering it in here. It does have relatively wide bezels say compared to the iPad or the Galaxy 10.1 or even the Sony Tablet S that we reviewed recently. It does give you grip points since it is wide right here and it seems very solidly made. It's a big enough tablet, it's 2.1 pounds because you've got that sliding mechanism in here. So the transformer itself, minus the keyboard section, is 1.5 pounds. Of course, that keyboard section is also another 1.5 pounds, in part because it has a secondary battery in it. So this guy is lighter for those of you who really want to have that keyboard with you at all times, that hardware keyboard. Take a look around the device. You can see this is what it looks like on its side. There is only one angle here of adjustment. It's nice because you don't need to carry a stand, but it's at 45 degrees. And I think that that was designed because if you would be pretty close to the device while you're typing, given where the keyboard is located relative to the display, and then you do need it tilting up at you. But if you're kicking back on the couch and watching some movies or something like that, I would have preferred a, a second lock position that was a bit more upright. The way it slides is very simple. You use your hand up here to push it up and down. Do not grab it and yank it anywhere else. Not that it's particularly delicate, but it's not been designed to be open any other way but by grabbing with this little arrow up here that it shows you. And it's a pretty firm slider. And once you lift up, it kind of locks and slides right in. It's a very nice mechanism. Definitely like the feel of it. It feels well enough made, especially considering it's relatively speaking inexpensive. The 16 gig is 479 and the 32 gig is 579. Now the transformer is 399 for the 16 gig and 499 for the 32 gig. So you're paying a bit more, but you're getting the built-in keyboard and you're getting something else, which is pretty cool, which is built-in USB host without needing a separate accessory. And you can see here we have a full-size USB port built right in. Works with flash drives, works with hard drives. I'm going to show you that. Mice, keyboards, probably won't be needing that keyboard so much. Now if you take a look at the back, one thing that wasn't so great about the transformer was its teeny little quiet and tinny speakers. Here we have speaker grills and we've got the speaker built into this section of the deck. So whether it's open or closed, the volume is definitely louder. Clearly it's going to be louder when it's open because you're not covering the speakers here, but you get more sound out of it. It's still not really rich and full exactly, not like the Galaxy Tab 10.1, but it's it's not bad. We have this that supports the deck here, and yes, it's a big old mirror, which is interesting. And here's the mini HDMI port, so you can plug this into your TV or a monitor. And the standard ASUS docking connector over here, you're going to plug the charger in or the USB cable if you want to transfer files from your computer to this guy right here. It does not have a micro USB port for file transfer. Kind of brown here, plastic, a lot of stickers on it, some of which are already peeling off. And on this side, we have the micro SD card slot, power button, pretty teeny, volume controls. And this last one here is the reset button, which instead of being your usual little paperclip sized pinhole thing to push, is a bigger button. So watch out for that because you might reboot it when you didn't expect to. In terms of specs, this is identical to the EPad Transformer and many other Android Honeycomb tablets on the market, so you're not going to gain or lose anything by going with this versus the transformer if you've got your heart set on one of ASUS's cool honeycomb tablets. It has ASUS's usual IPS 1280 by 800 pixel capacitive multi-touch display with 10 points of multi-touch. Runs on a 1 gigahertz NVIDIA Tegra 2 CPU with graphics acceleration. It has a gig of RAM. As I mentioned, it comes with either 16 or 32 gigs of storage. This is a Wi-Fi only model and it has Bluetooth and a GPS. There's no 3G built in. Of course, you, if you have a Wi-Fi hotspot or a phone that can act as a mobile hotspot, you can use it with this guy right here. And it ships with Honeycomb 3.1 out of the box. At some point that probably will change, but the first thing that happened when we powered this guy up is we got a prompt to install Android OS 3.2 Honeycomb. So awesome, we've got the latest, greatest operating system on here. Let me take a full 360 around the device. Now you can see this is 
the back here, it's again that kind of warm brown. It's a soft touch finish. It feels really nice in the hand and it's less prone to slipping. The curving on the sides also helps because bam, it bows out there so you're not going to drop it. And we've got the contrasting silver on the bottom and a little chrome strip here. Pretty nice. Same 5 megapixel autofocus camera that we have on the transformer. This one though seems to be improved. Things don't look quite as white and hazy as they do on the transformer which had pretty much a mediocre camera. We've got feet over here so it rests firmly on the ground. Some more feet down here. And again, if you take a look around, Asus has made it look slimmer than it actually is with the two-tone finish since you've got the silver and the brown over here. So it looks really nice and attractive and it's 0.71 inches thick. So it's almost a three quarters of an inch thick versus a half an inch or less for most honeycomb tablets and even thinner obviously for the Galaxy Tab 10.1 and the iPad 2. So yeah, it's thick and you're going to feel the weight, but if you need that keyboard, it's great. We have a kind of stippled, looks like a grill here, but there's no sound that comes out of here, just for looks, I guess, or maybe for cooling. So definitely, it's a nice looking tablet, especially for the price point, for, for just under 500 bucks. It's, it's a nice piece of hardware. Now let's compare it to the ePad Transformer up top. You can see it's just slightly shorter, except for at its, the widest bow point here. But otherwise, they're about the same. We're running the same screensaver. We have them set to the same brightness. And I would say that the slider has a slightly cooler temperature, which is probably a good thing because the transformer tends a little bit towards the, the purpley colors. From the side view, obviously the transformer is going to be much thinner. No sliding keyboard there. And then the back on the transformer is the not our favorite strange plastic stipply design. Um, doesn't show fingerprints much, which is nice, but nothing to write home about in terms of looks. Not as attractive as the sides or the front. And the transformer itself, just the tablet, if you don't buy the $150 optional keyboard dock, you've got the same sync connector, sync and charge connector. You have a HDMI port here, headphone jack, both have the headphone jack. Here's your micro SD card slot. Volume controls, power button, this is the teeny little speaker vent right here, and there is no full-size USB host port built in, so you do need to get the keyboard dock. But, since we're looking at something that has a built-in keyboard, and you probably are interested in a keyboard, let's transform the transformer and put on the keyboard dock. As you can see right here, and you've probably watched our transformer review, and you know all about this guy right here. And now we have the transformer on the right and the slider on the left here. And you can see obviously the difference in size. This guy is more compact, but what you get here is you get the trackpad and you get a larger, more spacious keyboard. Now the keys themselves are not that much bigger than the keys on this, but you get more spacing on this because it, well, it's, it simulates basically a netbook or an ultra portable notebook computer. And there's not much range of adjustment for this guy in terms of up-down. That's just the way they designed this hinge. So you're pretty much right here. This is about as far back as you can get, and you can come forward if you want. And this one, again, is canted back 45 degrees. One thing that's interesting to notice, though, is how much brighter, I and mean, this regardless of how we re-angle this guy, how much brighter the display seems to be on the slider. So which one is for you? That really depends on what it is you want to do with these with these. If you know you pretty much always want to have a keyboard with you, then this is obviously more convenient. It's an all-in-one design. You have the USB host built in. If you want to have a keyboard with you only some of the time, then this is great because you can detach this and just use that as a tablet by itself. Also, if you do a lot, a lot of typing and you feel like you can't adjust to this smaller keyboard, this does give you more space. Now, this is still smaller than a full-size notebook keyboard, obviously, but you do get some more space on this, and the trackpad, which makes it feel more like a PC experience. Something that you gain with the transformer if you do get this keyboard dock is you get a secondary battery in here, which is about 25 watt per hour battery. That's the same battery that's built into both the transformer and the slider, so that extends your runtime not double as long, but it gives you about four hours extra runtime. So with the transformer, you can go, say, about 10 hours, which is pretty good, maybe even a little bit longer, depending how conservative you are with your wireless and brightness settings. You also get a full-size SD card slot in the docking area, and that's in addition to the micro SD card slot that's built into the transformer itself, and two USB full-size ports with USB host capability. So again, even more computery notebooky, but this is enough to tide most people over, I think. The keyboard is, is pretty decent to type on for a small keyboard like this. 
and I didn't have any trouble writing a portion or a review on it. Uh, I wouldn't want to spend every day of my life typing on this size keyboard, but for on the go, for hitting Starbucks, for doing some work while on the road, it's fine. And you do get one USB port, which is probably enough to tide most of us over. And one more thing to consider between these two is that once you use the transformer with the keyboard dock, well, it becomes as thick, again, as a netbook, a slimmer netbook, it's true, but so the, the thickness comparison right here shows you that you're going to be carrying around just about as much thickness with either one of these guys, just more weight if you use the transformer with the keyboard. One thing to consider, though, is that the transformer, when it's closed, looks just like a regular old notebook. That means your, your screen is protected and it is not with the slider. Now that we've compared two relatively large size Android tablets, let's compare it to one of the more compact ones, and here's the Sony Tablet S below to give you an idea of the size difference between one of the smallest Android tablets that's available in the 10 inch ballpark category. It's actually 9.4 inches versus 10.1 here. And the Sony, well that's a unique wedge shape, so you go from super slim to as thick at the back end. Sony is 1.3 pounds much lighter than 2.1, but hey, you don't get a built-in keyboard with the Sony either. You'd have to use a separate Bluetooth keyboard or a USB keyboard. The E-pad slider has a Gorilla Glass display, by the way, when we were talking about being a bit more vulnerable than the transformer when the transformer is closed into a notebook position, so that's something to count on. There's plenty of glare here. That's a problem with all of these tablets, honestly. Uh, you might look for a matte screen protector if that drives you crazy when one becomes available for this. I find that I can move around and angle myself and that makes life a lot easier when it comes to the whole glare situation. So I'll take a look around the software now. Again, this also is the same stuff that you're going to get on the Transformer that you saw in our Transformer review. We've got the ASUS MyCloud service here so you can have some cloud storage that's included with the device. We've got the MyNet for DLNA and we've also got Splashtop Remote which I'll show you in a minute here. And we've got their My Library application. We'll take a quick look at that. and that is a EPUB and PDF reader and you can sideload books which I've done right here. These are books that I've put on. Uh, it's, it's pretty basic and ASUS actually has their store available now in the United States so you can check out their selection of books too and of course you can use Kindle, you can use Nook, you can use Kobo, you can use Sony Reader, you can use Aldeco, you can use everything with this guy in terms of ebook reading. But that's what their store looks like interested in the selection, you just tap on it and you can buy it. And they're using Versant, as you can see, for their ebook reseller. Now if you want to go back to your library, you just tap there and we'll check out a book that we've been reading. As you can see, we do get book covers. Facing page mode if you're using it in landscape mode. And you can also hold it upright, though it's not really the most ergonomic thing to hold in portrait mode to read that way too. But I find I actually like reading in the side-by-side -side method. And in terms of settings, if you tap here you can see that you can plus and minus on the font size, you can go to the table of contents, you can have it read aloud to you if you download Google's free speech synthesizer and you can make bookmarks. And it spends a lot of time indexing and re-indexing the book, which is just what it was doing. And even if we switch to portrait mode, it may do that again. If you want to go to a certain page, you use the slider down here. If you want to search for something, obviously there's a search box there. So let's close this and check it out in portrait mode. It takes a while sometimes for it to switch in portrait mode, but there you go. More like a large book page. Swipe a bullet and you get the animation. So it's not too bad. And not many of the manufacturer provided ebook reading applications support side loading, so we do like that. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Transformer or wondering what this, this is about, this is called the ASUS My Water or ASUS Water Active Wallpaper and it works with the accelerometer to jiggle the ice cubes around and it also indicates your power level, how much charge you've got left. So this is going to go down as we run out of battery power. That's a kind of cool, it's one of the better actually animated wallpapers I've ever seen. In terms of applications, you have all the standard Google stuff. You've got Search, you've got Google Music with support for Google Music Beta, you've got the full Android market with support for renting uh, and buying videos, movies, TV shows, as well as books. And all the PIM applications are on board. The movie studio, movie editors here. We've downloaded a couple of extras like Google Earth as well. And this, since this has an NVIDIA Tegra 2 CPU, is compatible with NVIDIA Tegra Zone games. I mentioned it had Splash Remote, and we're going to take a look at that right now. We've set up the 
host on Mac computer and we're going to connect to that right now. So here we've connected, it gives you hints which you don't have to see and this is actually the client, the Splashtop streamer running. Uh, there's a full Splashtop application they now charge $10 for on the App Store, in the Apple App Store that is. I believe the Windows version is still free if you want the full version for control. But here I've got a web browser window open and I'm running on a very large monitor so you can see I'm getting my Twitter updates over here and I've got a web browser going over here and here's a text document if I wanted to edit it right here I could so that's pretty cool and that's a way around dealing with something like Hulu which doesn't stream to Android tablets and Netflix because Netflix is not available for this on the market and the usual side loading trick that worked for the transformer currently does not work with this so sorry no Netflix right now until they officially add support for the application so that's Splash Top Remote in terms of widgets and software we get the the customized clock with the AccuWeather forecast embedded in this is really one of the nicest jobs that I've seen of embedding it other than HTC Sense We've got ASUS's MyZine, which just looks at whatever photos you've uploaded recently, whatever music you might have played, your weather, what emails, events, books that you've got loaded right here, and the web browser shortcut. Speaking of the web browser, we'll check that out right now. At first launch of the web browser, it prompts you to download the latest version of Adobe Flash Player. Uh, they don't preload it because they know you're only going to have to update it anyway. That comes so often, the updates for that. Default home page is ASUS's home page. We'll go to our own. As always, Android has a very capable web browser, and obviously we've got that Adobe Flash support built in right here. And if we tap on our Epic 4G Touch review, We can check out a YouTube video. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Works Samsung just fine. Epic Touch 4G S2. That's a good and there we've got in full screen mode, and you can hear the speakers in action. We've got it set to about three quarters volume right now. Works just fine. Super the browser also, by default, picks up the full version of most sites, but ASUS does something that we really like. If you go to settings, you don't have to do anything geeky here, and you want to tell it that you want to identify as the desktop browser, you can do that right here in the user agent setting. Set it to be desktop so you don't get hit with mobile versions of sites, which is just ever so pointless when you've got a large, powerful product like this to use. And we've got the usual YouTube player here for mobile formatted. And, and you know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using the, the mobile version of, of YouTube these days on Android Honeycomb tablets because the videos are just beautiful and they actually give you some useful stuff around the videos too. And then we'll check out the mobile version. HD though, so you know, it's not so really mobile, it just means it's not using Adobe Flash. And you get the related video stuff, the short cut to comments right here. And we'll go full screen. It also oh, looks every bit as good as the, the Flash version. So for YouTube, you might as well use this. But if you're visiting other sites, not YouTube channels, then that's when you really want Flash. Since this comes with a keyboard, they figure you might want to actually use Office documents. So if Polaris Office is included. This is the full version that can create Office documents, not just view them and edit them. And the funny thing about Polaris is, first of all, create something you can see. You can create a new document, a new spreadsheet, or a presentation. We'll just choose document. Even if you get the full version of Polaris, like say on the HTC Jetstream, it's way less feature. There's no undo, redo, and all the formatting stuff that you see here isn't available. So this is about as good as Polaris Office gets, and honestly, I, I like it quite a bit, the version that ASUS has been bundling on the transformer and on the ePad slider here. So you've got all sorts of formatting control, text colors, undo, redo, font changing. Let's see here. Inserting pictures. It, it's, it's quite complete and quite compatible, so that's nice, and we'll do a... And if I want to save it, 
I can do a save as, give it a name, choose a location, you know the drill. So for work on the go, Polaris Office definitely is a fine choice. Of course you can download another Office Suite if you want, Quick Office HD or Documents to Go. But if you've got something that works for free, why not stick with it? We've downloaded a few games to, to test on this as well, but honestly at 2.1 pounds you're probably not going to be playing accelerometer based games unless you've got some really beefy arms. So we're going to check out some games that are not accelerometer based like Samurai Vengeance. Samurai 2 Vengeance rather. A couple of frame drops and all the baddies first materialized, but after that, didn't smooth. Some of them just fine. With apologies for all the gore. And now we're checking out Dungeon Defenders HD, first wave. Alright, now we've encountered some bad guys. Let's see if we can challenge the frame rates. That's going just fine, going smoothly. So there you have Dungeon Defenders HD. So how about mass storage support for you more techie geeky kind of people who want to use all sorts of peripherals with this. Mice and keyboards are definitely a go. Uh, flash drives work. Even unpowered hard drives. This supplies enough power to just power our little Western Digital Passport hard drive here. One thing to note is if you use a micro SD card with this, the files will show up in gallery and in the music player. If you're using a USB storage device, it doesn't integrate into the built-in applications. You can still use the file manager to launch them one by one. Sort of like the Sony Tablet S, same deal there, but they don't just automatically show up in gallery. First we'll check out the flash drive here. I've got a fairly fast flash drive. You can see it says preparing external storage. Figures out what kind of storage it is. And then you have the little icon here, and you can tap to disconnect it to remove it safely, a la Windows, or you can choose the folder icon, which launches their file manager. So you can see we have some music on here, we have some videos, and we're going to try a 720p high-profile trailer stored on the flash drive. Now this is a pretty fast Patriot flash drive, which certainly helps, but it has no problem playing right off the flash drive. Tablet can also play 1080p video in standard profile, not in high profile, however, which is a, often an Android limitation unless the manufacturer has done something to improve the codex on the device. And of course, you can plug this into your TV and watch movies. Next, we'll plug in our Western Digital Passport drive. This is a 500 gig hard drive. And it is powering up. And again, we've got the mass storage notification, so we'll check it out using the file manager. And it remembers the last video I tried to play, which was high profile. And then we'll check it out here, and I've got a music directory copied from my Zune music player. And we can play a song using the file manager. But the thing is, the minute we exit the file manager, this is going to stop. see there. Now if we go into the music player, it does not show up in Buena Vista Social Club album. If you're using a third-party application that can browse to all folders though, you can still add songs and play to your heart's content. So that's the ASUS ePad slider, 10.1 inch Android Honeycomb tablet. It's available now, it just came out so 
Might not see it in stores today, but hopefully within a couple of weeks. It's available some places online, like Amazon already. And it might even be in your local Fry store. $4.79 for the 16 gig, $5.79 for the 32 gig. It is a Wi-Fi only Android Honeycomb tablet, and it has the unique, for now anyway, sliding keyboard design. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review.